Hello there, and welcome to another episode of Weird Music. Right, so uh, <laughs> this is going to be a really peculiar and somewhat gross episode of Weird Music, or maybe it'll be funny. Uh, most likely both, or who knows? <laughs> oh gosh, you'll, you'll know what I mean in a bit. Um, so uh, today we're doing a sequel episode today, taking another dive into the experimental world of Christophe Mignon after having already taken a dive in episode 11, of course. So, uh, friends of mine have heard me talk about this album uh, many, many times before, and since starting this series, I knew I would eventually cover this album because, you know, it's simply too weird not to. It's one of the main reasons why I started this series was, you know, to have a chance to talk about this album. You know, it's, it's really weird, it's peculiar, oddly fascinating on a visceral level, uh, you know, whatever, let's just get into it. We're of course returning to the weird experimental world of Christophe Mignon, specifically his fascinating collaborative album, South Winds. Right, so <laughs> let's address the elephant in the room, shall we? Um, South Winds. This is an album sourced entirely from farting and flatulence. <laughs> so what we what we have here is an experimental sound art album that is so weird and confusing. And although a part of me likes the works of Christophe Mignon, I really appreciate. You know, his experimental tendencies, his efforts to communicate in such obtuse and peculiar ways. I find there's something really baffling about South Winds, though. You know, there's, of course, this weird level of humour to be found on the album. And, you know, it's, the sounds of someone farting, it, it is kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, I heard you're a pretty flatulent guy. Any comment on that? Do no see here. Stop that. Attention wireless listeners, most of the sounds you are now hearing are not being made by me. Do stop, stop, oh, someone please stop the farting. No. We, we have to, it have to be said though, there is an experimental process being pursued on this album. And, you know, with an interest in the discovery of what you can produce from these peculiar sounds, you know, this, uh, it, it, it's very interesting. It's, it's so weird. It's, Kind of gross and disgusting to be honest with you, but yeah, fascinating as well. So I'm going to give it a shot. We're going to dive into this album today. <laughs> you know, so within the world of experimental art, there's this um, ongoing discussion over what constitutes art. You know, if I sell a tape of banana to a wall, is it art? If I film a building for 24 hours, is it art? And of course, in the world of music, does farting into a microphone count as art? Well, you know, the subjectivity of it all kind of leaves us with no answer, as we've you know, explored in the last video, as it was. And, uh, you know, we can really, all we can really do is just absorb the art piece, try to understand what, it, what it's making us feel and think and, you know, whatever, really. And, you know, Southwind is such a peculiar and weird album, and listening to it is going to throw you into this myriad of thoughts and emotions. And, you know, I'll, I'll be honest, I find myself mostly uncomfortable and grossed out, yet weirdly fascinated and intrigued by this recording. You know, there's such a peculiar process to it all, you know, with Mignon you know, simply not just recording sounds of flatulence, but instead using the sound as a launching off point for the discovery of experimentalism. Uh, the album opens up with five minutes of brown noise, though. And, you know, there's something fascinating and amusing about it. It's really funny, to be honest with you. And then much of the album, though, doesn't even sound like farting after that. It sounds, you know, more like electronic microsound that is, you know, kind of interesting. 
No, it's so structureless, but the compositions themselves feel very deliberate. And there's a real intent behind the project, even if it's one that's, you know, almost impossible to wrap your head around. <laughs> oh gosh, so, you know, for myself, you know, there's, there are interesting aspects I find about this album, you know, the, the opening track is such a visceral auditory experience that bombards you and overloads you with noise. It's, it's so weird because a part of you is held outside the experience thinking, what the hell is going on? And yet there's something fascinating about listening to the capabilities of someone's body producing this sound, I would argue. <laughs> you, know, you, you get a sense of physicality from listening to it. Like there's something truly fascinating about that. Like the human body, the, <laughs> the weird sounds it makes and you know, what that makes you feel when you, when, or think when you, when you hear it. And, you know, even the emotions and the sensations you feel are fascinating as well. Like, you know, this experiment for better or for worse, it's definitely making me experience and feel something, you know, different. And you know, maybe that's its intention. You know, so uh, as an album, it, it, it weirdly becomes a lot more easier to digest and listen to once we progress far past that first track. You know, from here, you know, all the sounds have been reduced, warped and repurposed into electronic samples, with it sounding nothing like its original source material whatsoever. You know, like I mentioned you know, before, instead of the sound of farcing and flatulence, it turns into micro sound, electronic frequencies, but it's all sourced from flatulence. <laughs> you know, it, it's turned itself into something else entirely, and you know, you know, across those seven electronic experiments, you, know, you have this very interesting quality to them as they explore the peculiar world of experimentalism and, you know, dives deep into the source of, you know, its recordings, the farting, and pulls out of it something entirely different and otherworldly. And, yeah, you know, weirdly enough, like, you know, this comes across as some of Mignon's arguably more approachable recordings in his very, very weird discography. You know, at times, like, it, it's so weird to even be thinking or saying that, but it, when you've explored a lot of Christophe, Christophe Mignon's weird, baffling albums, so it's, it's weird. Some of this is actually way easier to listen to. <laughs> but yeah, like, you no, know, Sad Winds, what, what's this all building up towards then, you know? It's, uh, so you've got, you know, you've got that first track, um... Uh, notice the big farting one. Then you got seven you know, experimental bits in between. But what's that then go towards? It goes up towards the 16-minute closing track Pujol, uh, which which is a weird name now that I've said it out loud. But um, yeah, in this track you're given eight minutes of low murmuring room tones. You know, sort of Richard Chartier levels of silent murmuring that will have you completely forgetting where you are and uh, what you're even trying to listen to here. <laughs> But it's after that eight minutes, so yeah, the sound of farting comes back. <laughs> and yeah, I, I have to be completely honest here, I found it extremely funny. <laughs> yeah, something about the sound and tone of flatulence, it, it, it just has me laughing uncontrollably sometimes. <laughs> you know, and with this being an art piece, I, I, I think it's important to mention my reactions and experiences listening to this, you know, for better or for worse. We mentioned it in the St. Abdullah record that it's, it's important and okay to laugh sometimes. And yeah, I, I don't know what Christophe Mignon's intention is, but I'm sorry, you made me laugh with this one. <laughs> like, I wasn't... You know, after hearing the opening track and all that brown noise for five minutes and being baffled and amused by it, and then those seven, you know, experimental electronic tracks, and then going into the last one, expecting more of that sort of experimentalism and then just being, you know, bombarded with that farting sound, I wasn't ready for it. And boy, did it, did it just make me chuckle. <laughs> yeah, just, it's just so funny, so funny for some reason. 
So, yeah, who, who knows what to think about this album, you know, this this album is somewhat notorious for people who have heard of it, you know, it's such a weird exploration of the capabilities of the human body, of what it can achieve and produce in terms of sound, especially from such a peculiar place. And, um, you know, as I as I mentioned before, though, it, it, it's definitely an art piece, though, uh, it, and I feel the subjectivity of art makes it really difficult to you know, to know what to think of it sometimes. Uh, no, it, it, it's, it's always a cop out and stuff, but at the same time, it, it's true though, it's true, because, you know, some people will find, you know, stuff to latch onto and, you know, enjoy or recognize or understand from it, and then other people just, they'll only hear the farting, I guess. <laughs> but, but regardless though, like, the, the fact I'm confused and mused and baffled and weirded out, you know, and fascinated, that intrigues me. I'm I'm interested in the fact that an album makes me feel things like that. You know, that's what it's gotten out of me. And you know, the, you know, I have to say, like, you know, the, the the experimental nature of it has produced some interesting recordings that you wouldn't have known would have been sourced from flatulence had it not come with this context. And yeah, I I just find it fascinating. I'm I'm, I'm intrigued that it's made me feel these things. You know, it's it's made me feel confused and stuff. Probably for the right reasons, but who knows? Who knows? Uh, but uh, b before we before we close off though, so a little uh, let's go back into a little bit of that background information, the sort of history of this album. No, so the um, the art of using flatulence in a performing context isn't actually something new. Uh, it's been explored in other forms of media, but it you know it seems to stem back to a performer known as Le Pentamane. And Le Pentamane was the stage name for one Joseph Pujol, same Pujol from, uh, named after the last track, of course, uh, from Marseille, France, 1857-1945. And Le Pentamane was known as a professional farter and would perform a variety of acts, all stemming from the acts of flatulence, uh, including replicating the sound of cannon fire, thunderstorms, playing the tunes of uh, Old Sol Mio and La Marcielle on an ocarina through a rubber tube inside his anus. <laughs> That's pretty gross but kind of funny. <laughs> you know, the man had an act, and people seemed to really like it at the time. You know, it, and I would say that though the history of this man and his, you know, his legacy, it really interested Bignon. So he then and what happened was he undertook a recording session with another La, La Pentamane. You know, um, the, the name La Pentamane is used in the liner notes uh, in reference to who they sourced the farting off of in this uh, It's not the same, same guy, I don't believe, but it's um, s some other guy does the same thing. And um, regards though, their recording session, uh, they had the intention of um, exploring the somatic winds as a response to Artur's ontological formulation. The depth of my being is the volume of my body. You know, it, it's interesting because it shows a very clear artistic intent and in exploring a very weirdly interesting process of the human body and what can be explored within it, you know. And um, I should also say as well, like, you know, uh, you know, the human body, the sounds it makes and stuff, this is actually something Mignon has um, explored before in different contexts. You know, for example, in his uh, 2000 release of Crackers, um, this album was sourced entirely from the cracking of bones. And, you know, that it seems that Mignon is fascinated by the sounds of the human body, you know, what and uh, what it can produce and what you can then do with those sounds by just completely reworking and repurposing them all. So, yeah, I think, I think we've come to the end of today's episode then with that. <laughs> to, to be honest, I'm really not sure what I think of about this album. It's... So weird, you know, I, I enjoy experimental works, uh, even ones that lean on extremes, but with this one, I find it straddling this line in me between it being intriguing and off-putting at the exact same time. But maybe, maybe that's the point? I mean, I'm not really sure. But, but maybe you should just give this a listen and see what you think and see how it makes you feel, you know, it's, um... No, it's certainly a controversial album in some aspects, you know, maybe in terms of how it stretches the subjectivity of art, you know, you know, like much like the banana art piece, you know, that certainly generated so much discussion when it came out. You know, but when it's all said and done, you know, art pieces like this, they have produced a talking point for whatever reason. 
you know, uh, it's certainly given me things to discuss with my friends, you know, we've, uh, we've laughed, we've been interested, things like that, you know, but it, it, it's all interesting in its own right, I would say. You know, um, yeah, but what would you make of it? Who knows? For now, though, I hope you've enjoyed this absurdly weird episode of Weird Music. If you are intrigued, feel free to check out South Winds by Christophe Mignon. I have popped the link in the description below, of course, for you. For now, though, I wish you all the best. I hope you take care, all the best, and bye-bye for now. Bye-bye!